Hey, Robin. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? Great. Doing great. Thanks so much for taking the time to chat with me today. Of course, my pleasure. My kids and I had the chance to see the bad guys at the early screening a little while ago, and we yeah. all loved it. So congrats on a successful film. It was so fun to watch. Hilarious. Thank you. Thank you. What, which, what do you mean when you say early screening? What do, what do you mean, like before the release? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I work with, um, you know, the local media here. We usually do, you know, a week or two before it comes out. It, so we oh, can yeah, write yeah. a little review. Yeah. So my kids always look forward to those. And they I'm all sure. gave it raving reviews. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much, you guys. <laughs> So I'd love to know what drew you to this project. Um, it, I think I think it's the uh, you know seeing the book of Aaron the first like the first mm -hmm. time like that first book um, that was actually uh, in the desk of Damon Ross the producer of the film we're working together. I see that cover and I'm like oh my god you know it's such an amazing idea. It's like those. The big bad wolf and those scary animals that we're all afraid of as gangsters in their suits you know it's reservoir dogs it's tarantino it's like the usual suspects i open the book and then the the big bad wolf is talking to you and saying hey you come over here and yeah i'm not gonna eat you but just i want to tell you that i'm gonna go good and you're like what <laughs> it's so good the idea is genius and i was like yeah i got sucked in right away and so at, at that point damon had a written with a with Etana writer they had a first draft of the script and I started reading it and I was like oh, it was not exactly what the movie is but like there was yeah. elements of it it was so funny and what there was great stuff but I was like I know I know what world we can bring to this and it's going to be the heist you know it's going to be Reservoir Dogs and going to be Ocean Eleven it's going to be all these heist movies and you know super cool big bad wolf in a suit you know stealing money and robbing banks like a gentleman thief and with money flying and stuff. That was my universe. And I was like, I want to do that with this kind of story and uh, that kind of message behind it. It was, and so it's how I went into it, but I, it was immediate for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it hit, it was a home run. That's so funny. You mentioned all those heist movies. Cause that's yeah. exactly what my husband and I said, when we left the theater, I was like, I feel like that was like an animated oceans 11 movie watching well, this huge heist go well, on. Then mic drop, you know, I did my job. This is exactly what I wanted. Yeah, it's exactly what we, we wanted, definitely. It was that yeah. with a bit of Mission Impossible. The only, yes, exactly. The one thing we added was heart behind it, you know, like there's a big mm -hmm. character story there, which is not usually the case within those films, uh, at least the Ocean Ocean franchise. Right, yeah. Much more of a magic trick, right? It's such an amazing plot. But in terms of character themselves, it's much more... Uh, it's, it's a little less deep, you know, in a way. The, the, the yes, main, the yeah. Goes through a massive change, you know. Right, yeah. Well, you mentioned the book. Um, so what's it like taking, um, what's the process like transferring the story from book to film? It's, um, well, first of all, we were in contact with Aaron Blaby, the writer, there, like uh, regularly because he's, uh, he's a partner on the film. He's an executive producer, so he knew what we were doing. And it was incredibly important for us to keep him uh, involved and keep him aware what where we were going because you don't want to because when you when you buy an adaptation rights uh, for uh, books like this you can basically do whatever you want. Yeah. In our case, we wanted to stay faithful to at least the the spirit of the films. Um, so it's twofold, right? The first one is like story on the story level. What did we want to tell? What story do you want to tell? And um, as I told you, you know, the first book opens on the big bad wolf saying, I'm going to go good. For us, it was important to actually start the movie before that, where we understand what process leads him to actually want to change and become a good guy. Um, so we changed that. And so that kind of unraveled a few things. And then I, we brought in the idea of the heist on top of the heist genre, mm -hmm. on top, which is a kind of a grounded world, right? So it's a bit more grounded than the book itself. So that's kind of the adaptation that we did. And obviously, we changed a few things. We changed uh, Tarantula's uh, gender. Uh, and we also changed the rest of the world as humans in the movie, but it's, it's, it's animals in the book. Um, so those are like uh, kind of other elements that we changed. But the story itself is kind of its own story with a lot of elements from the books that we just uh, yeah. worked into it, right? Uh, and all of that, David, uh, David Aaron was uh, very aware of all those changes and was totally behind us. Um, and the other thing that we need 
that the, the other adaptation that we do is obviously the visual adaptation, the style adaptation. Yes. Which, as you know, as you've seen, you know, the movie is much different visually than the books. Uh, and I think that's a. Uh, it was all made because the books are incredibly efficient and very stylized. But I think for the viewers' experience of big screen, we needed something that was um, less stylized, a bit richer, a bit more like, uh, uh, and also adapted for animation. When you have a, you know, a shark with no legs <laughs> uh, in the books, that's incredibly hard to animate. You know, it doesn't. It's gonna. It would have felt super goofy. So we had to do make yeah. some changes and and refine stuff. So those are like the big challenges, but also yeah. you know, fun challenges. Very interesting. I love hearing all those little tidbits of how it comes to be, you know. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned um, a lot of humor and a lot of heart, which is something the movie definitely has. The wolf has, spoiler alert, a big heart, you know. It does, so yeah. What do you hope families or kids, what kind of lessons do you hope they learn from watching this film? Well, I mean, like, you know, it's that's what I love about this film is like it has a big quite a few messages, but a big message at its core, right? And it's baked mm -hmm. into the, the, the story of the, those scary animals. So to me, it's like really the main theme would be uh, coming out and thinking about how to not judge without knowing a bit more. You know, it's like not judging a book by its cover, really. And, and that's kind of the story we're talking about. Um, our bad guys, the, the, the fun thing is like our bad guys have been seen as those bad guys all their lives, as those monsters mm -hmm. all, all their lives, and that they have identified themselves with that, you know, that, that stamp that we've given, given them until the wolf decides to actually, or realizes that it's not necessarily right or true, right? And so I think that's kind of a, a the core is like talking about it, like as a message, you know, what is the yeah. message you're trying to give? You know, it's about redemption, it's about changing your life, it's about owning your life as well and just being the true version of yourself. Are you really a bad guy because people say so? Nah, maybe not. You know, and that's the kind of message that I like. Uh, and also, if you're a bad guy, if you change your life and your friends don't agree with you or don't want you to change, are they really good friends? You know, that's right. a big, yeah. big subject that we're tackling in this in this movie. You know, and if they are really good friends, they'll come around or they'll support you. Um, and it's okay, no matter what, to change your life and just become the person you want to become. You know. Um, but I think it's really at its core, it's like second chances and really about, yeah. you know. And beautiful, powerful message that kids really need to hear nowadays. I agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so my last question for well. you is, oh, sorry. No, totally my, for it. my last question for you is what bad guy character do you relate to the most and why? <laughs> uh, for me, it's Mr. Wolf. Wolf. Um, yeah. Because, because he's got, you know, uh he's a character who's going through that kind of life crisis you know yes yep and and i think it's kind of what happened to me recently and so <laughs> i just have put a little bit of in, in myself <laughs> in there you know definitely so yeah it's it's that story that is uh close to mine in a way i mean close and not really close but like you know what i mean like i relate to his emotions yes you know? yeah you know well, thank you very much for taking the time to talk with me today and congrats on this film. I know it's going to resonate really well with families, both parents and kids. Wow. Thank you so much, Robin. Really, really thank you. And have a great day. Thank you.